Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube, which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopsschool.com. Thank you. So guys, the problem here is the simple problem is container is gone. OK. So data is gone. Simple problem. Container is gone. Data is gone. That is a problem. This is a problem. Actually, data should not be gone. So let's uh, take in this way. Uh, I'm just cleaning up all this stuff. So I think too many commands are there. Let me. History. So I'm stopping all the containers. Removing all the containers. I think we don't have any containers, I guess. Yeah, you don't. Have. OK, so here. There's one container I'm creating. OK, look at my screen here. Docker run hyphen ITD Ubuntu. And I got this container here. Look at this. This container I will write some file so I will attach or let's I'm feeling a little lazy so I will do from outside only touch opt Raju dot txt. This is the very important file for me. Okay, this file is can be generated by applications database or anything. I don't know but it's very important file. Okay, <clears throat> if you if you see that this file is there or not look at this ls opt the file is there but but i will go into the opt uh, not opt var lib docker i will search this file is there or not and here i am searching raju.txt this file is there in the container layer also and then um, a diff layer also because uh, diff has all this stuff i mean same layer but two locations you have it now I'll stop this container. So if I stop this container. So can I find this file? Oh, it's still there. The file is still there. But if I delete this container, then what will happen? Data is gone. So this is the problem with a container. Container is gone. Data is gone. But what we want, we want how to have data purses beyond beyond a life cycle of the container simple life cycle of the container of the of a container did you understand the problem and this this is a did you understand that <coughs> what is expectations all of all of us yes Guys? yeah so this is the problem so solution is docker volume now how we can use the docker volumes that i'm going to talk about it okay so guys docker volumes types okay uh, here i would say types means uh, where and all you can store the data so by the way you can store the data in a various different uh, storage tech types but right now i'm not covering those because not a part of our session uh, else it'll become a half day session but the one I'm covering right now is built in one. The Docker has a built in types. So which are the types? One of the type is volume itself. OK, there's the first one. Second type which we have is uh, mount FS. OK, and third type is we have a temp FS. These are the <coughs> built in one. If you want more storage technologies to be supported like NFS or some other technologies like EBS or AWS or Google Drive or anything, whatever it is, you have to install the plugin. OK, that's a out of context. So now these are the types in built. We have 
with the docker volumes now the question is okay this type is one two three but when i do the uh, this when i use the this type where the data will be stored so guys data will be stored in the location which is here for this yeah if you use this type the data will be stored here that means container is gone but the data you can find it at this location and the data you can reuse with a different container okay but let's say if you use mount fs then where this will be stored so here it can be stored in anywhere anywhere in the host machine i said host machine the place where you are running the docker engine host machine anywhere it can be anywhere okay so here it's not being stored it can be anywhere in the host machine apart from this location it's a mount fs okay now third type is temp fs this will be there in the memory memory typically when we store the data it's accessible very fast you can access very fast okay but the problem with this uh, memory uh, in memory database is like uh, the moment you reboot the system uh, this uh, this uh, what do you say this will go this data will be erased so that's a problem with it so right now these are the three types which is inbuilt types of docker volumes using that you can persist the, your data beyond the life cycle of the containers okay so now let me start working with it so now i'm going to create volume so first let me see that how many volumes you have it so docker volume is a command to work with the volumes okay docker volume and here you see you can create a volume any type which is volume here and you can inspect the volume you can information you can get the information about the volume you can list the volume you can prune the volume which is not used local volumes and then you can remove the volumes also if you want to remove it simple so now i want to list the volume so here you see oh so many volumes has come so many volumes is there but i remember i have not created any volumes any idea how these volumes got created anyone have a memory good memory anyone i did not create these my, my volumes so how did we get these many volumes here docker the name names name spaces and all we created mm -hmm. no let's let's do one thing let's go inside on the volumes if i go inside this there's a data folder i go inside the data folder i find this one okay uh, some strange files are there pwd sorry i miss var lib docker volume so let's go inside this here and here some data folder is there oh what is this <coughs> what is this anyone the jenkins container which we deployed right guys do you remember that when we were monitoring the docker events okay and when we were creating the docker uh, jenkins container then it was creating a volumes also and attaching to the container do you remember that uh, yes yeah. yeah so same volumes guys so see that all the container is gone but the data is still there how come because the developer of jenkins image has inbuilt created the volumes through the docker file and they were storing all the data which is generated by the containers in the some sub, sub separate folder that is how so you can see that container is gone i deleted those containers long ago but the data is still persistent so what i'm going to do is i'm going to not use this data although i can use it data this data but i'm going to clean it out so how can you clean it out let me learn from myself and <coughs> here prune prune means the all the data which is not been used i would like to delete and here everything got deleted so now you have nothing in this directory see you you have nothing okay so here you see du hyphen k sh dot gone all the data is gone so no problem we will create so now i'm going to create manually i'm going to show you this volume type first one i'm going to show you manually but you will you can do through the docker file also and i'll show you that one also okay so first let's learn manually so how to create a volumes i think by now you know that so docker volume is a command and create 
what volumes you want to create volumes let's say dev1 and here dev2 here <coughs> and here i got this dev1 and dev2 now let's say if you create volume and you don't give the name so it will create randomly like this this is what has happened with the docker also uh, sorry jenkins also so if you give the name, it will be having a name. If you don't give the name, it will generate 40 character hash unique values. And that is how it can be identified. By the way, these volumes I have created is empty. So can we go and check this? Uh, CD dev one. Look at my screen guys. All of you see data is nothing. There is nothing. So I've created a volume. So this volumes I can use for the container. Any volumes I can use for the containers. Any volumes I can use one volumes. I can use two volumes. I can use n number of volumes I can use with the containers, but how the question is how so guys <coughs> command is very simple docker run hyphen ITD. I hope you remember this command. Okay, and here what I'm going to do hyphen B hyphen V for volumes which volumes you want to mount it dev one to which uh, inside a container when you want to mount it OPT. DevOps school devops school see here so <coughs> dev one you are mounting inside a container of the ubuntu uh, in a devops school okay can we go and check this see here docker ps container is created docker exec and here and then ls and what opt i think yeah ls opt see here opt Devops school is there. So now if any file you create over there, you should be seeing in this. So let's do one thing. Let's create some file here. So I'm creating some file here. Ramu. Kaka dot txt. This is a very important file for me. It may be generated in a different ways application and this that and all. But uh, right now I'm generating manually just for the demo. See here, the file is there. LS. OPT. This file is there. So this file is there in the container. Can we check this file is there in the local machines or not? So I'm just going to the dev one and the data. Oh, is this file is there? Can you do one thing? Can I create one file manually here and see that if I can see in the container? So Ramu dot it uh, Ramu two dot txt I'm creating here. Can I see that whether it's there in the container or not? Exec is there so you see you write here you see there you see, you write there you see here are you understanding it or not yeah so guys this is the way can you can you can you mount the two volumes at a time yes you can do that so here hyphen v see here i'm creating one more container here uh oh by mistake i created without specification so here i'm creating devops one and hyphen v one more what was the dev two right dev two and devops inside a container devops two see here last container this is the one docker exec ls slash opt see here <coughs> So you can mount as many volumes you want hyphen V is the options. Okay, but the magic starts now. I am going to get rid of all this container right now. So docker ps docker stop. Stop. All this container ID. And I'm going to remove it. And done. Wonderful. And data is still there. You see here. Can you use it this data? See here, data is still there. Data is not gone. So can we use this data for some other container? Yes, you can do that same command. You can mount it and reuse it. So problem is solved. So guys, did you understand that? Uh, how can we persist the data beyond the life cycle of the container through the volumes? Yeah. Okay. So this is guys volume type. This is the one which I was talking about. So now let me try other commands here. So here I you can inspect the volumes also inspect dev one. See here you can delete the volumes also rm dev two docker volume uh, dev two 
uh, dev2 is not there okay docker volume rm yes gone see here see dev2 is gone okay so you can delete this volume is also the, the name which generated long with the uh, yeah gone and see here it's gone <coughs> so guys this is the volume now what is the next one so next one is a mount fs so mount fs is very straightforward mount fs means anywhere in the host machine so first go to the somewhere in the host machine so this is my host machine i'll create one directory which is called backup back e up back i up i created no problem i'll just go with it here this is the directory i want to store the data so what to do docker run hyphen itd hyphen v host machine and where inside the container opt ramu ubuntu same you have to just instead of volume name you have to give the full path and that's become a mount fs that's all nothing else okay so enter container got created and here docker execute container id df hyphen kh see here opt ramu okay inside a container so guys this is the way you can use mount fs now as part of the assignments i am going to give you temp fs so you have to check it out how can you store that temp uh, how can you do the use the temp fs you can use the hemp file file you can use google and this will be assignment this is your lab okay any questions guys here so far all of you have uh what does happen if we have the same folder present already in the root file system the volume that we are planning to mount uh sorry i didn't get you so let's assume a specific directory is already present in the root file system of the container mm -hmm. and then planning to mount the same directory location with different uh set of files within a particular folder mm -hmm. then uh, what happens does the already existing information in the root file system gets abstracted ah so you are saying okay it's a good question actually i don't know how many of you have understood it but what she is saying probably correct me if i'm wrong there is one location in the there is one location in the container let's say tmp okay and you are trying to uh, create let's say there is one location docker uh, uh, just a second let me recall this command here uh, here there is a one location already opt already available so what i want i want to mount it in this case what will happen look at this docker exec uh, docker ps docker exec and uh, container id and df hyphen kh see here so if that directory is already exist you see here opt and it's not considered actually so in this case it is not considered uh, how about the uh, already existing information within the container does it get hidden uh, no that uh, if the uh, the path is already existing okay remember the path is already existing then your mapping is not being done at all mapping is not been done so if you see here docker inspect container id go to the volume section and opt bi key destination writable true propaganda so let's do one thing uh docker ps and here i will write some file touch touch docker exec and df hyphen kh sorry ls opt sorry see here. so here 
the mapping is not being done but if i see the data is being stored so in that case is being overwritten so let's do one thing one more try we will do that in simple way so there's one container i'm creating okay docker run hyphen itd ubuntu and here docker ps docker i am getting into this container and what i'm doing basically is i'm creating one directory so under the opt ramu here mkdir opt <coughs> opt slash ramu i am creating so here i see that ramu is here ramu is here in this l opt ramu is here in this location now what i will do i will create some files here uh, so go to cd opt ramu and vi uh, file one dot txt uh, vi is not there so cat file file one file one dot txt i created some files some dummy files saved uh, control d saved it so now this file is created now what i'm going to do i'm completely coming out of it and now i'm going to create one image of out, out out of this so this container i'm working with so docker commit hyphen m docker commit hyphen m test what is the container name who are you author rajesh and uh, which container which container image name okay so here i created one image with with the with the path which is called <clears throat> opt ramu so docker images test image i am having right now i am doing here using the test image i am creating a uh, container so here uh, docker uh, volume create and uh, let's say test uh, volume name itself i'll create a test now here uh, run hyphen itd hyphen v test and here opt ramu okay this is the things which i am doing and i am seeing that whether it's overwritten or what exactly it's happening because this remember in the container the container of this image will have a opt ramu and two files i had created earlier or one files maybe i think uh, no i think one file okay so let's see what is happens uh sorry ubuntu uh, ubuntu not ubuntu test and here this container you have docker uh exec container id df hyphen uh, not df ls opt ramu is there yes ramu is there ramu file is there is file is there now what i will do is uh what i will do i'll do go to var var lib uh, var lib docker and volume and the test here volume and here i am going to create some files and uh, touch raja raju.txt some some files okay and can i see that file is there or not so merging is happening so you see here if the file the path is already exist uh, the merging is happening and if the file is unique then i think it will be taken from the containers okay uh, the file you will <coughs> see in, from the con container and if the file is un uh, not unique then both the file will be merged and you will be seeing that to, to both the files all right thank you yeah. any other question guys <clears throat> Okay. Mm -hmm. You said that whenever we are creating a, a container, then it, it gets mounted on the system, right? Uh, uh, this con container, one container, one layer, right? What was your question? I, I got confused no, a little it bit. It gets mounted. It gets mounted on the system. You showed by doing df minus h. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. I did not did, did the df hyphen kh. Remember, I did not do that. I did the df hyphen kh in the container. Remember. So it's not mounted in the system. It's mounted in the container. 
Are you yes, getting my point? Yeah, so volume is getting mounted in the container. Yeah. But the container itself is getting mounted, right? Right, yeah. So this this size is coming 30 GB with every container. How that's is a there host a way size can... actually? That's a host size. My 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 machine itself is having 30 GB at last. Okay. This one. See ya. Okay, then 2GB is going for this particular container. Oh, no, 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 no. 2GB is used actually. So okay. this is the host machine information. Same has, th has been replicated here. Okay. That means I can, my container still, you can use the host uh, storage up to the 29GB. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, guys, any other questions? Along with that, you can access our other tutorials such as Docker, Ansible, Jenkins, Terraform, Splunk, AWS, Azure, and various other DevOps related premium tutorials with our channel membership. If you would have any issues with our channel membership, you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 399 plan and grow your skills immensely. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, we will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching.